This effect is turbulent displace. It's commonly used for distortions and it can be used as a standalone effect or between transitions and also across text. I'm going to be going over all the settings and also how I prefer to use it, plus how it can be used as a texture on text and things like that. So let's get started. So as you can see here, I've prepared some clips. So this one has a scale in which transitions into this scale in. The next two clips are completely identical except they reversed so it scales out instead. And this text over here is just an example on how you can pair it with things like scale. So if you look at the scale setting you can see it zooms out and then it zooms back in. And lastly we have this zigzag or grass type of texture on this text. And I've also added a posterized time effect and cut it down to 12 frames per second which gives it this jittery effect. Okay so what I just did was duplicate the first two clips and remove the turbulent displace. So now we have a basic scale in. So the first thing we're going to do is add on turbulent displace. Underneath distort just drag it onto your clip. The displacement is basically what kind of distortion effect it gives off. Leaving it at turbulent will give you a consistent distortion effect through the clip so you can see it's distorted everywhere although this can be used by using the offset so this can basically move the direction so if you wanted to keyframe it from left to right you can do that more on that later however it does work best with something like bulge if you just click on the offset once it will give you this pin which will allow you to freely move the center of where the distortion takes place so turbulent is kind of consistent so even if you were to move it around it'll still make a melty effect throughout the entire clip and of course the same applies for bulge as well and finally twist is well twist it makes the clip look like it's been rotated similar to the first two options except you can see that it creates a curve so it goes up and then down and then it just keeps on curving no matter where you place it it's going to create a curve hence the name twist the next three options are quite confusing when i click on them it's pretty much the same as the first three but a little bit stronger for example twist mover makes it look like it came out of a junji ito manga however the last three are quite easy to understand so if i just go back to turbulent and then click on the first one which is vertical displacement vertical meaning up and down so you can see they're pointing up or down horizontal is of course horizontal so it's left and right so it's distortion but sideways and cross is a combination of the two now you've got all of these options which is cool but you can adjust it to your liking with the amount and the size the amount is how distorted you want it so if i just reset this back to 50 you can see it's not very distorted and the more i decrease it you can see it looks like the original clip you can even turn it down to a negative value but of course there's no reflect options so the edges will end up like this there's no way to hide them sadly and the size is how far it spreads so for example if I turned up the amount to something like let's say 300 something like 313 and if I turn down the size the effect is still in place but it looks more like the original clip like that but that's at size too which is why there are tiny bumps everywhere so think it as an overlay the more you decrease it the smaller they get and the higher the number the less noticeable it is even though that's obvious but I'm sure you get my point so the amount is at 300 and the size is at 2 the more I increase the amount the more warps and bumps there are it essentially becomes a filter as you can see now let's reset the effect complexity controls how rough you want it to look so if I increase the value you can see it looks very like mushed up it's similar to the amount so for example if I was to set it to 25 and then turn up the complexity so let's say 8 even though the amount is 25 there are still a ton of warps and little bumps around as you can see again it's something very difficult to explain unlike evolution which is how the effect changes over time so this can be keyframed so for example zero at the start and let's say something like 200 at the end as a result we get a warp that moves over time that's how i created the example i showed earlier with the text the jitter effect now i've got to be honest i don't actually use this pinning option i've used it a few times but most of the time it's not very useful so for example um I've got my default settings except for the amount and size they're both 100 however if I set the pinning to pin horizontal it kind of removes the mirror so the edges depending on what you selected mine was horizontal so it got rid of the uh, the mirror on the left side and the right side so it's kind of like distorted it setting it to vertical will of course do the opposite so now I'm missing the bottom and top part of the clip if I do left it for some reason gets rid of the right and if I do right it gets rid of the left quite confusing so we're gonna move on in fact actually we're not you can use this pinning option if you want to go for a stylistic approach so for example if you would if you do want to for some reason get rid of the edges you can just set it to none so one more time we'll go through it so displacement and then we've got all of these options cool amount is how distorted it is so higher the amount the more distortion lower the amount 
well, I was gonna say no distortion or less distortion, but that's not the case. I think the best way to describe it would be if you increase the amount, it pushes the uh, the warps inwards. But if you decrease the amount to like a negative value, it pushes it outwards. Size, how far it goes. So the higher you set it, the less noticeable it is. And the lower the amount, the closer it is to the clip. Offset is where you want it. Complexity is how much you want to ruin it even more. And evolution is how much it changes over time. This option at the bottom can be left to low. I don't really see a difference when I set it to high. If it makes no difference, then there's no point explaining it. Right, so let's use it on an example. We're going to use it on the scale in. So I'm going to add on the effect. And what I'm going to do is first of all, set it to zero. Because I want the warp to look normal at the beginning. I don't want it to be noticeable until we reach towards the uh, towards the middle so just around here and then i want the warp to be visible so i'll set it to something like 100 and maybe turn down the size perhaps something like 60 so not too noticeable so not like that that doesn't really look right sorry that's too i meant 16 so that doesn't look right the offset's fine it's centered i don't really want it anywhere else so i'll just leave it at that complexity now i could increase that but i think it looks fine how it is so you know it's not really a big deal and i'm going to leave the evolution since i'm controlling on the amount out. this will have to be keyframed wait where's my keyframe gone i thought i made a keyframe but no never mind anyway so i'm going to set it to zero at the beginning and then i'll head towards the end just one keyframe back so remember not to the end just one keyframe back so we can see this frame and then i can set the amount to 100 also here's a quick tip if you're going to set the amount to something negative so let's say negative 50 and you're seeing this around the edges just move it above your warp transform effect or whatever it is that you're using to create a scale that could be the transform effect that fixed it for me even though i'm not using a negative value so i'm just going to go back so yeah zero at the beginning and then 50 at the end i'm going to keyframe this so it's going to gradually become faster over time so first keyframe and then just pull this to the right somewhere there velocity should be close to zero like that perfect and i might adjust it just a little bit like that i'll be honest i can't really see any distortion going on so i might turn it up i think i'm going to go for 100 which is what i was meant to set it to anyway i don't know why i put it as 50 i think that looks much better overall so we're going to move on to the second clip whack it on and set it to twist maybe i think twist looks kind of good but we won't really know until we mess with the other settings so for example the amount i definitely want it something high so maybe like 150 because because we've reached a point where the distortion is at its peak so maybe 150 let me try bulge that looks pretty okay we'll see how it looks like we can always change it it doesn't matter so 150 at the beginning and zero at the end graph that as well just like that and for some reason in the new premiere pro versions you can't move the handle to the left you have to like move it forwards and then you can i don't know why but i just want my warps so let's play it back not bad at all that's pretty cool the only issue is the warps are very noticeable especially in the second clip however i think it's very impactful in fact i think it's better than my examples yep that's no we're not using that i might actually tighten this up a little so if i just move it forwards and do something like this so what i just did there was tighten up the keyframe so the value drops faster so previously it was at 97.2 if you were to move one keyframe ahead but now because i tightened up the keyframe it drops to 72 so i'm just going to move this back of course there is not a big difference but it still looks better than before let's pair this with some effects so i'm just going to drag an adjustment layer on top and cut it down to a few frames so maybe like one two three four one two three four one two three four like so i think i'm going to add an exposure transition just click once basic correction head to the start exposure to the middle and set it to uh, 5, I think. I'm going to graph that as well. Just head to the start. Pull. Let go. Head to the end. 0. Remove first keyframe. Graph that as well. Paste it and done. I think it's a bit too flashy. So I might just extend the keyframes a bit. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 5, 6. And do the same. So 2 more keyframes for each end. And just pull it back to each side. So hopefully this looks better. Yep, that's much better than before. So that's one transition you can pair it with. If you want, you can also add something like S-Shake. And the reason why I'm choosing S-Shake is because it can kind of ruin or just completely mess up the turbulent displays, just like with the warp transform effect and any other scale effect that you use. So I'm just going to quickly make a shake. Frequency can be two, zero, zero, uh, maybe 20 or 25, sure. Okay, shake done. So uh, what you need to do, sorry, I mean, what you need to do if it looks a bit odd. So if you're seeing any transparent or black parts around the edges, I'm not. But if you are, you may need to just reorder your effects. So maybe uh, you might need to place S shake above warp transform or maybe turbulent display should be underneath S shake. You can see that makes a difference. So before and then after placing it underneath S shake, different order, different results. That's pretty much how it works. So if there's anything you see wrong with it, just reorder it and it'll probably fix it. 
hopefully. I'm actually quite happy with this shake transition. So you know what? I'll leave a preset below for this scale in, just this part over here, containing all three of these effects. Oh, and of course, this scale in as well, otherwise it's a bit pointless. So I've got this example here with basic scales and also some keyframing. If I hide the turbulent displays, you can see it's literally just a scale out and then a scale in. And I've also used opacity to create that little flicker effect as it scales back in. So to achieve something like this, um, pick your value. I'm going to pick, let's say 150. I'm going to keyframe that at the beginning, head towards the center, so around here. Actually, I think I'll head two keyframes back, so just there, which is where these scales shift. You can see this is where the bump is. And I'll graph that, so the bump needs to be towards the left, just like that. So far, so good. Very smooth. I don't think I mentioned that I set the amount to 20. Sorry about that. Next, I'm going to head towards the end, just one keyframe back as always. And instead of a positive number, I'm going to go pick a negative one. So maybe negative 100, just so we can create that contrast, so it's 150 then it's down to 25 and then it's the other way around so now it's negative 100 it looks a bit too warpy so i might do negative 75 instead highlight and get rid of the first keyframe this is what i usually always do when graphing just makes it so much easier because with all keyframes it looks like this and i can't really graph this segment only so i get rid of the other ones so in this case it's the first one and then I'll graph it so like that. Then I'll head back and then paste it again. So it should turn out like this. These kinds of text will be available in my next text pack, which is coming very soon. So no presets at the moment. Sorry. One more thing I can do is move this first keyframe one frame ahead, head back and set it to something higher. So maybe like 250, just so it creates that jump from 250 to 150 and then it gradually decreases. I can also keyframe the complexity so I can set it to something like three or two and then just reset it the next frame. And again, that enhances the jump from a high value to a lower value, which makes it turn out like this, even though it's a little piece of detail, but I think it does make a difference. And finally for texture, even though I kind of did apply this previously, so I've just reset the effect. For this, what you can do is increase the amount and then decrease the size as much as you want to. I would recommend setting the size to something like two, which is the lowest it can get. and the the more you increase the amount, the stronger the effect becomes. So 200 looks like this and 900 looks like this. And that's how I made this jittery text over here. What I did was I put it to twist the amount to negative 150. Even though 150 looks the same, I did negative 150, which looks like this. Not a big difference. I also keyframed the evolution to zero at the start, which is the original value. I went towards the end and I just set it as high as I could. Once you reach 360, it turns into like this massive like whole number i don't know what it's called so we've got one of 360 degrees if that makes sense and if we just keep on increasing it until we reach 360 once again it creates a two so there's two 360s which is 720. i also added posterized time to create the choppy effect without it it looks a bit too smooth like that so yeah that was my attempted explanation for turbulent displays thank you for watching and i'll see you next time peace